CME Info's continuing education and board certification programs bring the conference to you. The following is a video sample from the Oakstone Institute's Comprehensive Review of Neurology. This excerpt is from course director Dr. Martin Samuel's lecture titled, Neurologic Aspects of Common Electrolyte Disturbances. Hello everyone, I'm Martin Samuels. I'm the chair of the uh, Department of Neurology at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, uh, professor of neurology at Harvard Medical School. And I'm uh, gonna tell you a little bit about uh, one of the most important groups of disorders that cause uh, what is generally called metabolic encephalopathy, and that is disorders of the kidney and uh, related electrolyte uh, disorders. We're gonna mainly think about electrolyte disorders and related ones. These are very common problems seen in the general hospital and of course as neurologists we're often called to see patients on other services who have an alteration in uh, either their motor function or their uh, brain function and we have to try to isolate the uh, cause instead of just saying the generic term metabolic encephalopathy. So what I want to do is to first give you an overview of some of the important concepts uh, which underlie the generic term uh, metabolic encephalopathy and then we're going to do a case-based method uh, to, uh, to learn about this because the concepts uh, are hard to think about in uh, generic terms, better to think about them in terms of individual patients. So this is a list of the concepts that we're going to review first before we start to look at our first patient. That's the uh, AA gradient or the uh, alveolar arterial gradient. We're going to think about osmolarity and tonicity. Uh, how to assess uh, the volume status of a patient by the physical examination. Uh, think about calcium and uric acid status. Uh, azotemia, that is to say the BUN goes up. Is it renal or pre-renal azotemia? We're going to review the concept of the anion gap, how to calculate the anion gap and how to deal with that piece of uh, data. And then we'll talk about respiratory acidosis and alkalosis and, and metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. So the first concept is the concept of the AA gradient. This, is, uh, this difference reflects the barrier to oxygen diffusion from the alveolus into the arterial blood. And I'm not gonna go through the details of exactly how it's calculated, but actually if you think through it, it's, it's almost intuitively obvious concept. So uh, the capital A is uh, alveolus and the small a is uh, arterial. So this is the alveolar arterial gradient. Uh, and you can see the, f the, f the formula here, 76, uh, 760 millimeters of mercury, I abbreviated it TOR, minus 47 TOR times the uh, FiO2 minus the PaCO2 over 2.8 minus the PaO2. And if we just plug in the numbers for atmospheric pressure and the uh, fraction of oxygen in inspired air, which is 21%, you recall, so we'll put in the numbers 0.21 uh, we can actually simplify this formula to, to be much easier to manage, and that is 150 minus the PaCO2 over 0 0.8 minus the PaO2. The normal AA gradient um, uh, is the patient's age over 4 plus 4. So that means for a 40-year-old, it's 40 over 4 plus 4, which is 14. And for a 100-year-old, is uh, 100 over 4 plus 4, which is 29. So in summary, the AA grade, the normal AA gradient, goes from zero to 30, gradually rising with age, but never ever goes above 30. So if you quickly calculate this and it's over 30, you know that the person has a long or a big AA gradient. Uh, an abnormality in the AA gradient is very simple. It's either, it's either lung that is perfused but not adequately uh, ventilated or the reverse. That is, it's lung which is ventilated but not ap uh, adequately perfused. An example of the former, lung which is perfused but not well ventilated, would be somebody with pulmonary edema, uh, either cardiac pulmonary edema or neurogenic pulmonary edema. Pneumonia is another very good example of a lung which is perfused but not well ventilated. Uh, and the reverse, the prototypical disease entity would be pulmonary embolism. You know, of course, that pulmonary embolism usually isn't one big clot, but it's clot that breaks up and goes off into, into arterioles. Uh, giving you a lung which is uh, well ventilated but not well perfused. In, in both of these subtypes, there's a big AA gradient, gradient. And remember I said, no matter how old the person is, it shouldn't be over 30. Top quality board certification reviews and continuing education programs, guaranteed. 
For more information about this self-study activity, go to www.cmeinfo.com slash 778V or call us at 1-800-284-8433.